Morning show on a rainy Tuesday in Park City, Utah. This is Halloween wet weather. This is like scary. I'm going to a haunted house weather. I'm stuck in the so? That's what made me. That's what made me think of. <laughs> I guess we're. I guess we're talking about in the second hour. <laughs> I don't know, Chelsea. <laughs> romance. Oh boy, okay. that's right. I forgot. So I don't know it's not Valentine's Day, but the Utah Romance Writers Association is having a big conference come up. And um, if you have ever had any interest in writing, you know, putting your thoughts down and and what it takes to become a published author. So sure. these guys represent the Romance Writers Association, but uh, in many ways they represent all writers because what they're facing what they've gone through is, is pretty much the same story all across the board whatever genre or themes uh, you write in and so they'll be giving us some tips and what to expect if you want to attend uh, the conference which is uh, I believe in Deer Valley So, Chelsea, what have we got coming up in the show first? Yes. We are talking with the U Utah Romance Writers Association. No, I should let Joe do the talking no, that's why. I, that's why I let you do it. <laughs> but um, I myself have always you know, delved a little bit into writing, and I'm sure many of you romances. have as well. No, not romances. No, no, no. That, that's it. Those are fun to read for me, but I would never write those. I feel awkward. <laughs> but they're going to talk about some of those things like, you know, how to get your writing out there, what uh, associations you should join if you're interested in, um, you know, becoming a published author. So it's not just romance. So that is, you know, their expertise, what these guys come from. So um, they'll have some interesting things to talk to us about. That's what their conference coming out up. Uh, it'll take place at Deer Valley, and uh, all of them will be there. There are some New York Times bestselling authors that will also be present. So... Uh, should be fascinating. You have a very smug look on your face. Why are you smiling? I was thinking of your writing. I saw Charles come off on a white oh, horse. Oh, man. <laughs> not even. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not my type at all. Uh, no, on well, westerns? Uh, I like western movies, but there is actually a cowboy Science fiction. in the lineup. Science fiction can be good. I like those. But there's uh, three authors coming on the show, one of which is actually a cowboy. Oh, cool. Yeah. Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I have with me uh, three authors with me, authors and writers and people who are, you know, well established in, in what they're doing and really want to help us out with some tips. So uh, going through the lineup here this morning, you know, we have a Reed Lance Rosenthal right there with the cowboy hat. You can't miss him. And then Jewel Adams here in the middle. And then Sandy L. Rowland. So thank you so much, all three of you, for Ple joining us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. And there's a really exciting conference coming up, which is kind of what we brought you in, but we also want to talk about tips about writing. And uh, both of you are with the Utah Romance Writers Association. You are a part of the actual, is it the council? We're on the board. Yes, great. And you all write romance. We all write you romance. All do. And uh, we're going to get into some more tips about that. Uh, but first, before we launch into uh, more about writing, uh, what is this conference all about? Let's discuss kind of, you know, who is this for and what can we expect from it? Well, it's uh, the Utah uh, RWA is, we have our own chapter here, and it's a chapter of the RWA. It's a prestigious organization that has over 10,000 members, and it's here for writers, and we meet monthly where we uh, can hone our skills and mingle with other authors, and we've got amazing workshops each month, and we just have a good time and learn a lot. Fantastic, and what, what a fun time, I think, to collaborate and work with and get ideas. Yeah, from other writers mm -hmm. and authors. And uh, I was actually shocked to hear that romance is actually, you know, the largest market in fiction with sales over $1.3 So it sounds like you guys are in the right field. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. You sure are. Uh, you know, is that true? And, and why is this the case, Sandy? 
You know, everyone has relationships, and romance is actually, or fiction romance, is about relationships. Mm -hmm. And we're drawn to love, and we're drawn to the happy ending that it offers, especially when times are tough, like they are right now in this country. Would you say that's kind of what attracts? The absolutely, reader? absolutely. And, and anymore, there is no typical reader. Mm -hmm. Obviously, men read romance. Look at Reed. You would not accept it. <laughs> but everyone is Absolutely. I can believe that, Reed. I do. <laughs> absolutely. So there's no typical anymore. So we're looking for that escapism into something where the hero overcomes huge odds and he wins the girl. And we end up having a story of hope. I mean, that's why I read romance. Mm -hmm. That's why I write romance. I want to put out their stories that give people hope. And... It's so relatable because everyone's had a romance. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's relatable, whether it be you know that third grade crush that you had, anywhere to something you know uh, more rich and deep. So mm -hmm. I think we all can relate to that. And you know, read it, you know, just like Sandy was saying. Looking at you, I put, you would strike me as a romance writer. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like, a, I'm oh, a romantic guy. But, <laughs> but you know, Sandy, Sandy was right. Romance is a universal energy. Mm -hmm. There's nobody watching right now, if you ask them to raise their hands, if they've never had a love, no hands would go up, male or female. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not only are the men heroine, but the women in romance stories are heroine. I mean, it's usually strong women, independent women, conflicted characters, and around the basis of romance, you can build all sorts of different stories. You know, the Western genre, the paranormal genre, you know, the, the blood-sucking love vampires. Oh, gosh. And, and, you know, Are we going to get into that today? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't forget the zombies. Okay? The zombies. Yeah, I, honestly, I write, the zombies honestly zombies? I write Western. Not even Western zombies, just Westerns. Oh but, you know, in the chapter are, uh -huh. uh, there's a number of genres represented. You know, YA, which is young adult, mm -hmm. There's inspirational, there's Western, there's paranormal. It, it's amazing how many fingers, how many tentacles romance has in all sorts of stories. Mm -hmm. Oh, so so much going on, and what an exciting field, I think. And a little sizzle, too. Yeah, a little sizzle. There you go. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is a little bit of off the pen. So it comes for. Yeah, I think a lot. Too. I think a lot. <laughs> it's like, I write really. Are you read, are you write the most sizzling ones? Uh, <laughs> Out of this room? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. I mean, during the edits, my fingers burn. <laughs> yeah, this is good. I'm not convinced. Uh, well, I really have no idea how prolific the romance writing community is in Utah. You know, there's a very large following, and we've even seen a lot of that with you know, a lot of recent novels. You know, you mentioned vampires. So let's not get into that, because that's a whole thing in and of itself. But, you know, there's lots of things that, that, that have followed that. Uh, so tell us more about how you became a romance writer. Oh, well, I started reading romance novels when I was 15, and I was just totally hooked. I love romance novels, mm -hmm. and when I finally started writing, I decided, for me, inspirational was the way to go, because I wanted to make sure that whatever I wrote, my daughters would be able to read it, and too. And you write a lot of interracial and romance And I do stories. interracial romance. Why is that? I do that, too, because... Love, like we, we said, is universal and it knows no color and, you know, and we are in a diverse country and when it comes to love, if it's true love, people are colorblind and so that's what I try to put in my stories and, you know, it's a lot of fun writing it. What do you, what has been the feedback? From that, what it's said. been an awesome response. When I first started writing, it was over 20 years ago, uh, interracial market was not that big at all. There were a few, but not many. But now it has opened up, and it's so wide, and there's this total market for it now, and I've kind of carved my niche there, and it's been pretty awesome seeing the response to the stories. And there has been such, you know, wide and, and good response in many of these, you know, like you, romance writers have been very productive in, in what they're doing. Is there room for, for more authors, for those often coming authors? Absolutely. Just like you mentioned a few minutes ago, romance fiction last year brought in over $1.3 billion, so obviously there's room for more, for more authors to be out there. Mm -hmm. The big thing with... Um, the success rate, for instance, in our chapter, we've had people, they work hard, I'll tell you, they work really hard, 
but some of them have been able to quit their day job. <laughs> and one of the gals recently, with her income from writing alone, she was able to purchase herself a new car. Some are bringing in thousands of dollars a month. Wow. Not that that happens overnight. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, wait, wait a minute. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> the chapter gives a huge amount of support for people to reach that level of success. Mm -hmm. I have seen it. It does happen. It can happen. That, that's really amazing and you know becoming a writer or a published author can seem very daunting to, to a lot of people you know there's a lot of knowledge and you know I think experience that, that goes into for, for the most part into obtaining that level of success what are some tips uh, that you guys would have for those who are considering a becoming a writer or even a romance writer read you know my first tip is to write get it down on paper I mean, everybody, I think, has kind of an inner writer within themselves, okay? Some will act on it, some won't. But if you're motivated in that way, do it. And, you know, there's plenty of room for males in romance. I mean, there's very few of us. Yeah, tell well, me about this. Well, well, when I go to the national convention and I'm one of eight guys, <laughs> we wouldn't even go into the other seven. When I'm one of eight guys and there's 3,500 women mm -hmm. writers from around the country in North America there, you know, swimming in that, in that tsunami of estrogen is quite an experience. Wow. But, <laughs> but, but writing adventure, writing action, has, has enlarged the male readership too. You know, my books are 45% male readers. And I think that that's increasing because more and more really? adventure. That you know, high. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And c cultural impacts, you know, down home impacts, what everybody different writes is mm -hmm. appealing to the male readers also. So it's an expanding market, and I think there's plenty of room for writers. Just write, get it on the paper. Just get. Uh, that's not the hardest part. Put that pen to paper. Your key, your fingers on the keyboard, and just just. Right. You're, you're, don't you're, preaching to, you're preaching to the <laughs> choir as we pay so we kind of I'm talking to myself. Where's the next chapter? I'm talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Joel, what about you? For those who are interested in trying to publish their first book, what are some tips you would give them? And see, I was going to say exactly what he said. You know, until you start it, that story is never going to be written. And you've got to get to a point where you're writing for yourself, not worrying about what anybody else is going to think what about you. What do you mean work. by writing for yourself? What distinguishes that between trying to publish? Please, the crowd. Writing something that you really feel strongly about. Like when I write my novels, um, most of my novels are to give women hope and help women understand how special they are and how amazing we are because there's so little of that these you know today according to the world we're judging ourselves by that and so I think you're wonderful yeah mm -hmm. oh, thanks you're wonderful too. I agree <laughs> thanks but, I, but that's what I do and so I you know I tell people it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks you write what you love and then you start taking workshops and you hone your skills and pretty soon you're going to gain your voice and you're going to grow. I like that. Sandy, what do you have to say? Yeah, I was going to say that for me, part of why I ever even looked for a writing group was I wanted to learn more about the process of writing. What I, I didn't know what I didn't know mm -hmm. until I hooked up with some people. And that gave me the idea of, oh, there's a lot to learn. And so I took classes and on some skills because your success level, yes, determines a lot about your voice and the trueness that you bring to, to your story. But there's also a craft involved to that and there's a lot to learn. There's places you can do that. So you mentioned a writing a writer's group. Why is it so important you know, to explore that option? Because I mean in those settings you're you're sharing some of your innermost like ideas, and that's so, you know, you just, you, you just feel, you bear your soul. soul. You yeah. absolutely bear your soul. And I was right. trying to call a English class when I had oh. that thing, so <laughs> you guys have a little bit more experience, but that's what I <laughs> Oh, no, it's, it, it's more of the same. It's more of the same. And that's the thing. A writing group is really essential to any degree of success because in, in hooking up with a writing group, I did it because it's so solitary and it's very tough. Like you said, it's you and the keyboard, or, or like Reed said, it's it's him and the page. And when you start sending your work out or you want someone to read it for a critique, you're going to get some rejections. You're going to get people saying, I don't like this. And when you have a good writing group, they're going to give you that support to help you work through that and get past the rough patches. And so when you're looking, 
you want to try out a, a number of writing groups. I tried out three or four before I actually landed at Romance Writers. And in the course of that, you also want to ask the questions, what does this group offer me? Hopefully some education about writing in general, the craft of it, also the business of it, and the emotional support that you need. Because unless you're a writer, other people don't get this. They don't understand how tough it can be. Mm -hmm. So for me, people like Reed and Jewel here and other people in the chapter, they become family to me because you do bear your soul. And it's a safe place. And you realize that all I've had that experience. Absolutely. And that's what's so amazing about uh -huh. sharing those stories. Wow, mm -hmm. very cool. Uh, well, Joel, let's talk about the Utah Writers, uh, or Romance Writers Association. And, uh, you know, that's one of the best and most, you know, preeminent organizations in the state. Why is that? And what has that done for you? Well, it just, you know, it's just one of those, it's a group that just really, really helps you to, you know, like I said, get in to the writing business and it helps. There's just so many helps as far as the RWA that really get you going in your writing and like we've got a conference coming up next week on the 5th and 6th and it's at the Silver Baron Lodge in um, Deer Valley and we've got some amazing uh, presenters coming and you learn a lot at those workshops you know from those presenters and um, we just have a great, great time and by the end of the conference you're just like I can do anything I'm going to get out here and I'm going to be on the New York Times bestseller list in another week you know that's just you come out with that kind of attitude and it's just pretty oh, awesome. Very cool so I mean if you are interested what if you're just kind of dabbling in romance, but you still want to interact with other writers? Uh, is this still a good option to attend, or is this mostly just for those who are strictly romance writers? Oh, you know, we have people in the chapter that don't necessarily write romance, like Reed said. Some are young adult authors. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of romance for a 10-year-old in their story. <laughs> and some of the people write more mystery and suspense. They're those kind of authors. But the reason they come to a conference and the reason that they may join Utah Romance Writers is because of the emotional support. Plus, also, there's all the education. Learning to write is learning to write, regardless of what, what it is, what your genre might be. So it's still a great place to come to a conference because we have agents coming and editors coming, and some of them are acquiring. They're looking to buy your stuff. So there's those opportunities to pitch. So there are people that don't even belong to our chapter that are flying in from around the country for that opportunity, as well as learning, like Jill said, from the various classes mm -hmm. on just the craft of writing. You know, you, uh, there's an empathy between writers, there's a support between writers, there's a shared experience between writers, and there's an honest critique, sometimes you don't want to hear it, between, <laughs> between Honest writers. critique, and, oh, you know, oh dear. It, nobody can be their own editor. You know the story, he was his own attorney, he has a fool for a client. Well, he was a, his own editor, will write a bad book. I mean, mm -hmm. it's as simple as that. And this chapter, I mean, my, our ranches are 400 miles away in Wyoming. I joined this chapter because of the personalities in it, the town in it, and I think the honest support and feedback that you get. And this conference is terrific because not only is it for writers, aspiring members, non-members of the chapter, but there's some public stuff too. There's book signing from 5 to 7, I think, on Friday at the Shadow Inn, is it? Uh, Silver Baron. Yeah, Silver Baron. Silver Baron. Silver Baron. Silver Baron. Silver Baron. <laughs> On Saturday, Saturday night. On Saturday night. But it is 5 to 7. Oh, 5 to 7. There you go. He's thinking of his next book. <laughs> <laughs> next novel. He's always thinking of But the chapter's terrific. And you know, uh, because I live in a rem remote area, oh. I deal with many chapters in RWA. But I chose this one because of the people in it and because of the uh, spirit of camarader camaraderie and the push everybody gives to one another. Mm -hmm. And to answer your question, look, somebody can not write much, somebody can just be thinking about it, somebody can be can have it as a profession. This chapter will work for any of them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. A great place to go to get more inspiration. Where can we go? A website uh, for membership and to get more. We have a lot of information on our website and it's co currently covering information about the conference, about the book signing, and about our local chapter. And the the info for the address is utahrwa.com. So it's just the word utahrwa.com. 
and it's all on there. Well, the three of you inspired me to get my pen down and start writing a little bit more, so thank you so much. Well, come on out yes, I, 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 have to, I have to just say, we have, you can attend three meetings for free. There's no push there. Check us out. Try it out. See what you think. Well, it sounds like a fun time. It is. I like that. Well, you guys can uh, visit with Jewel, Sandy, and Rita there at the conference that are coming up. What's the date again? October 5th and October 5th and 6th. So yeah. be sure to check them out and also check out their individual websites as well and see what they've got going on. Uh, thanks for joining us once again, all you guys, and have a fantastic day. We sure are happy to have you here this morning. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.